Did you imagine the bottom of the ocean to be boring? Empty, maybe just stone, sand or mud? At least scientists thought so for a very long time. But today we know better. When the Alvin, a research submarine, discovered the hydrothermal vents in 1977, they found plenty of life. Remember the guys from last episode that shoot a lot of chemicals into the water and form those sulfuric big smokers? Loads of animals live on them. You can find those giant tube worms. They can be taller than an adult human. There are fields of deep sea horse mussels. Thousands of white shrimp. They don't have eyes. I mean, sure, why would you need eyes if it's constantly dark, right? You'll see deep sea crabs called yady crabs because they look so fluffy. There are anemones. You might even encounter an octopus or a fish. Skates. They're closely related to the rays. Lay their eggs on warm rocks around the vents for incubation. Well, but how can life exist so far away from the sunlight? You know how plants use the energy of the sun, perform photosynthesis and thus provide the nutrients for all the animals and therefore create the basis of life? But sun will never reach the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. Never mind, they found a different way. Remember those dewworms I've showed you? They don't have a mouth or an anus. They only have a lung to breathe in the chemicals of the surrounding water. And that's very rich in a chemical called hydrogen sulfide. Now, they have millions of bacteria sitting in their guts. That's called a trophosome. Safe and warm, using up this energy-rich chemical and producing sugar. This is called chemosynthesis. The worm can use this sugar. Someone can eat the worm, etc. Just like plants at the surface, they create the basis of a highly diverse ecosystem at the hydrothermal vents. But not only at the black smokers, also on the manganese nodules and cobalt crusts, you can find loads of life. Here, they don't have those hot, energy-spitting ovens, so they have to live of whatever falls through the water column to the ocean floor. It's a harsh life, and the animals have to be highly adapted. For example, on the nodules, you can find anemones, sponges and all kinds of coral growing on the hard substrate. Around them, octopuses, sea stars, or crabs make their way over the muddy sediment and rocks, even purple sea slugs. And in the soil live all kinds of microbes digesting the fallen detritus. This ecosystem is not only fascinating, it's also crucial for the life on the surface. How? By digesting the leftovers from, for example, dead animals. They remineralize the fixed carbon so that it can be used again for primary production like photosynthesis at the surface. So, you see, down on the ocean seafloor, it's not all boring or empty. The life down there is very diverse, creative and dependent on the special environment. If you want to know more about the strange but beautiful creatures and the unique ecosystem of the deep ocean floor, check out the articles and videos in the links below. Also, if you have any questions, just type them in the comments. In the next episode, I'm going to interview Alyssa Stola. She's a marine biologist at the University of Edinburgh and a whale biologist. How deep can whales dive? Might they be impacted by deep sea mining? What are big whales? Stay tuned and listen to those and many more interesting answers.